Welcome to Shut Up Football. I'm Jeff Stoltzfus. That's Kevin. This episode, we're talking about running back prospects in the 2023 NFL Draft. I have purposely been avoiding all rankings and opinions on these guys so I can form my own opinions and share them with you. This means I'm probably about to say some pretty dumb stuff because I spent an average of 5 to 10 minutes watching tape on each one and now I feel qualified to talk about them as if I were an expert. I'm going to rank them perhaps in an order that might just surprise you. We've got a dozen names to talk about, so let's get to it. These are my first impressions of the top running back prospects heading into the 2023 NFL Draft. Bijan Robinson, Texas. If you're a fan of Bijan's, you're going to love this one. Robinson is the ideal height and weight for the position. He's got good bend around the corner, cuts well in traffic, has the ability to avoid tackles as well as break them. He shows patience as the play develops and speed through the crease, decent hands as a receiver, and good contact balance. I didn't see anything to complain about, and I doubt I'm breaking new ground saying Bijan Robinson is good. My comp for him is LaDainian Tomlinson. There's just something about the way he runs. It's going to be an interesting game of chicken in the first round to see who's willing to draft him. I know, running backs rarely go in the first round these days, but I just can't imagine some GM feeling good about picking a guard over Bijan. Jameer Gibbs, Alabama. This dude is a knife that cuts through defenses. Phenomenal speed, he's a very good receiver, elusive in open space. I liked almost everything I saw from him. My only concern is pass protection. It was a small sample size, but I saw some things that need improvement at the next level. My comp for Gibbs is Jamal Charles. Very similar size and build, very fluid in and out of cuts. Charles ran with more power and was better at breaking tackles. If Gibbs doesn't make them miss, often he's going down. It's hard for me to look at this guy and not think of the Eagles. I think they move on from Miles Sanders. There's no way they're drafting a running back in the first round, even with two picks, but Maybe in the second, they look at Gibbs. I think they value speed and receiving in their scheme. And if they miss on him, it might be some time before they look at another back in this draft. Zach Charbonnet, UCLA. I looked at Charbonnet last year before I realized he wasn't declaring for the draft. I had him ranked second between Brees Hall and Kenneth Walker. So I was curious to see if my opinion changed. To my surprise, I wrote the exact same comments. Good decision making, good cuts, runs with power, decent hands as a receiver, hard to tackle. My comp last year was an old school running back. I still agree with that, but I prefer a name. Based on his running style, I comp him to Brian Robinson. But if he added some more muscle and we go back even further, how about Steven Jackson? Charbonnet is a bit fancy for a brick shithouse like this. I'm going to call him Gash Cannon. Gash runs with power and has a mean stiff arm. He's fun to watch. I'm curious to see how his speed tests at the combine because he is a big dude. So is he going to cut some weight to improve his 40 time and potentially his draft stock? Sean Tucker, Syracuse. Tucker is one of my favorites. He's got lateral quickness, fast around the edge, runs with power. He's got good contact balance, good vision. He shows well as a receiver, and he demonstrates good change of direction speed. Syracuse clearly made him a centerpiece, and opposing teams keyed in on him. But still, he was dragging defenders from Notre Dame, Florida, and Clemson. He's talented, and he's fast. His comp is Austin Eckler. He's a little bit bigger, but he gives the same vibes. I'd expect him to fall somewhere around the third round of the draft, probably to a team that doesn't even immediately need him, but it would certainly put whoever is in their backfield on notice. I don't see him sharing the load much. He's a complete package. Zach Evans, Ole Miss. This dude looks the part. Big, strong, fast. He runs with patience and fights through contact. He's shifty, has receiving skills. He's got a mean stiff arm. Can't say why, but I get a real Cowboys feeling about him. But his comp is actually a niner. How about Elijah Mitchell? During the three weeks a year Mitchell is not on IR, he's a pretty good running back. I see a lot of the same traits in Zach Evans. That's my top five. I think everyone here is capable of being a feature back in the NFL. The next five names also have that potential, but more likely I think they end up as part of a tandem or rotation. To me, there is a definitive tear break here. 
Tank Bigsby, Auburn. He's all about speed. If he gets a crease, he's gone. He's also quick around the corner and showed to be a viable pass catcher. What I didn't see was a lot of cutting or the ability to change direction without great cost to his speed. Basically, he needed it to be there or he wasn't going to get it. I didn't see any ability to create on his own. I prefer a running back who's more versatile. In fact, there are more versatile backs I ranked after him because Bigsby, in my eyes, only really does one thing, but he does it really well. I think he'd be a good change of pace guy to pair in a tandem with someone who has a different skill set. Maybe join Tyler Algier in Atlanta or the Steelers, somewhere he can mix in for part-time work. Kendra Miller, TCU. This is another one of my favorites and one I'm surprised by. He's got some ability to cut and catch, decent speed, but mostly he's just a wrecking ball that won't go down. Call me crazy, but I can't watch this dude without thinking of Marshawn Lynch. He rumbles, he stumbles, he bounces off of people like he's in a pinball machine and fights and just refuses to go down. And he's always falling forward. Remember Mjolnir? Thor's hammer? That's Kendra Miller. He's freaking Mjolnir. Look at him. Mjolnir don't give a shit. He's another one I'd love to see on the Eagles. Not because he fits the scheme or possesses the traits I typically associate with the birds, but because I want to see him running behind that offensive line, like a human thresher, ripping heads from their bodies and fertilizing the field with them, or better yet, salting the scorched earth left in his wake like a Carthaginian war general. Yeah, definitely Eagles. Kenny McIntosh, Georgia. Great receiving skills, some decent cuts and moves, good around the corner. He should get a look in the NFL for his speed and receiving skills alone. But there is something kind of funny about him. He feels like a receiver who transitioned to running back. I don't know his history. Maybe that's what happened. But there's something about his running style that just strikes me as kind of light. It's not that he doesn't run hard. He just doesn't run with authority. He shows more speed than power. He gets tackled easier than you'd want. He's got decent size. Maybe an off-season and a pro weight room doing power squats is all he needs. I feel like he has a lot of room to grow yet. Dwayne McBride, UAB. He could be a real one. He's got great speed and fight. He's hard to tackle. I like the way he runs. I don't have any questions for that. He'll either run through or around you and pick up large gains. However, the lingering questions for McBride are pass protection and pass catching. I don't know the answer because I didn't see it in the tape, but a lack of both would certainly keep him from moving higher on my list. I don't see a direct comp. There is something in his running style that reminds me of Le'Veon Bell, though physically they're not the same. So maybe like Lev Light or Levy-ish Bell? Israel Banaconda, Pittsburgh. Pay attention to this man. He's got the long speed and short area burst. He's fast around the corner, fights through contact, and shows some receiving ability. Every game, he's breaking off long chunks, and strangely, he left a lot on the field. There are times where he doesn't peel away from the block set up in front of him soon enough, and he ends up with contact that should never have been. If he goes to the right team and the right coaches, I think they're going to get so much more out of him. Oh yeah, and he's only 20 years old. My comp is Miles Sanders. I have no idea where he'll end up getting drafted, but wherever it is, I think he's a steal. Tajay Spears, Tulane. This man destroyed my ability to make a top 10. I only found out about him just before making this video, but I cannot keep him off this list. He's too good. Long speed, good cuts, and lateral agility. Ability to create on his own, good vision, good patience to let the play develop. My only concerns for him are he has a slighter build. He's currently listed at 204. I'm not sure if that's true. He doesn't have great power, but he runs with intensity and fight. I didn't see any pass catching in the tape I watched. I think his comp is LaShawn McCoy. The running talent is there. Of that, I have no doubt. I just need to see some receiving skills and a weigh-in. And that rounds out my top 11. Before we drop to the last tier, we have to pay some attention to a couple of guys that were just left out of the top 11, but are definitely not a tier down. Devin A. Chain, Texas A&M. 
He's got good burst and fight, shows vision, makes good cuts. He's a decent receiver. I have no complaints about his game. He's a playmaker and a weapon. He's so good, he probably should have cracked my top 11, if not the first tier. Why he hasn't, yet, is he's currently listed at 5'9", which in and of itself is not a huge problem, but he's also listed at 185 pounds, and that is concerning. The closest comp I could think of was Naheem Hines. He's clearly not an every down back at that size. I think realistically, he's going to be a part-time contributor. Kick returns, gadget plays, and mix in on passing downs. If he gets drafted to your team, you should probably feel great about it. But for fantasy football, I wouldn't want him on my team, unless he shows up to the combine weighing 210 pounds and runs a 4-5 flat. That would remove any concerns and launch him further up the list. But a buck 85? And then there's Deuce Vaughn, Kansas State, listed at 5 foot 6 and sub 200 pounds, though he looks pretty thick. He's not cracking the top tier if he can be conveniently stowed in an overhead bin during a flight, but he also cannot be ignored. His size is the only issue, because he plays like a lead back. He's got receiving skills, he's fast, cuts with quickness, long speed, and hits with power. I mean, he's dragging dudes with weight on him. It's like watching Ezekiel Elliott in Boston Scott's body. Vaughn is a last second addition to this video. I thought I was done and then I found him, so don't get too hung up on the actual ranking. The more I watch, the more I like him. I still don't think he can be a full down workhorse for any team at that size, but if he's installed as your number two or number three running back and worked into the rotation, I guarantee you he's better than the next team's number three running back and probably better than their number two. He's tall enough to ride the rides at Disneyland, let the man play. Now I'm clearly talking about actual football here. When it comes to fantasy, who knows? It's all about the situation and opportunities he's afforded, and that's mostly why he's ranked where he is. Now we drop down to the last tier, and I'm not going to go into depth on them individually. There wasn't a huge gap in talent between them all. Most of them fell into two camps. Either they had the size or the quickness, but not both. I'm hesitant to buy into any of these guys until I see some combine metrics to give me a reason to. Tavion Thomas, Chase Brown, Muhammad Ibrahim, Eric Gray, Keaton Mitchell, and Chris Rodriguez Jr. So that's running back prospects for 2023. Please let me know if I missed anybody. I'm sure I did, but I'm always happy to evaluate another prospect. Share your comments below. I'd love to know what you think and why. And if you like this video, go watch another one. I just did quarterback rankings. Wide receivers are next. Thank you for watching Shut Up Football. We'll catch you next time. Peace. Check the mic and make sure it sound right, boy. It sound right, boy.